Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's David Stanbury. Today's video is all about the three elements that I wanna get in all of my wedding images. So let's get straight into it. So hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's David Stanbury. Uh, I'm a wedding and portrait photographer based in the Northwest of England. And if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, then please subscribe, hit the notification button, then you don't miss any of our future videos. So what's today's video all about? Well, over the last couple of months, I've been doing some talks and seminars, and one question that always seems to come out is what sort of elements am I looking for to create my signature hero shots? So I thought I would do a little bit of a YouTube video to run through some photographs and run through some of the elements that I'm looking for. And the elements are location, lighting, and emotion. Now I'm looking for all three of them in, in all of my images, but hey, we don't live in a perfect world, so we're not gonna get all three. So I'm gonna run through some images now that, that show the three different elements, and then at the end of this video, I'm gonna run through some, video, uh, some images that show you when all the three elements have come together. So let's start, first of all, in no particular order, I'm gonna start with lighting, and I'm gonna run through some of the images that are led by lighting, and some of the technical details behind them as well. So let's get into them images. So our first image uh, involves using ambient light, available light. Um, this actually is a lovely moment between the bride, uh, mother and her sister. She's putting the dress on. And what we've done is we've actually metered for the, uh, the available light, which is coming through the bedroom window, um, which has caused the hallway to go into, into dark, into shadow. Uh, the reason for this is because the eye naturally goes to the brightest subject and we don't want uh, you to be looking at the picture frames on the wall or going anywhere else. It goes straight to where the bride is. Um, so again, using the light just to lead the, the viewer's eye to where you want it to go is a lovely little tip. So as well as daylight or ambient light, we can always use artificial light. And for this particular image here of the bride and groom, we've decided to turn them into a silhouette. And this has been done by using a speed light and pointing the speed light towards the barn door. Attached to the speed light has been a grid. Now the grid's job really is to stop the light spill and to create that circle so we can control that light. And onto this also we've attached a, an orange or a CTO gel uh, to give it a bit of colour. Now the colour is just to match the lights uh, in the foreground of this photograph. So you, you can use any colour gel if you wanted to you can be as creative as you wanted to one thing to think about here is is positioning make sure that the bride and groom don't break that circle or they're not set or make sure that they're central to that circle uh, because there's no worse feeling than going home uh, after a wedding and finding that they're not dead center and, and the shot has been ruined um, this is a great idea silhouettes for if you've got uh, not much of foreground detail or uh, your background detail is not very interesting other than that you can just get creative on any wedding day it always makes a great shot so this is a great example when you've got absolutely nothing and the weather's terrible as well. As you can see here, this was taken on an extremely wet moment during uh, during a wedding day. Uh, and what I did is I... Um I positioned my assistant behind the bride and groom holding a speed light uh, underneath an umbrella to keep them and the speed light dry. But the speed light's been set to 24 mil, which is the widest angle setting. Um, the idea for this is I wanted that light to catch the raindrops and turn the raindrops into, into almost little stars to give a, a really beautiful image here for the bride and groom. Um, the bride and groom are underneath a white umbrella. Now that white umbrella really has got two purposes. Um, purpose number one is it, it's colour coordinated with the wedding dress and it looks quite bridal. But also it's acting like a, like a soft reflector. So, so as the light's hitting the raindrops and behind the bride and groom, it's also hitting the brolet and it's bouncing and directing that light down to the bride and groom as well. Um, great connection between the bride and groom. And this is a really good image you can do during a heavy rainstorm. Just make sure your bride and groom know that they're going to get wet through during this. But this bride and groom, Thank God we're well and truly up for this photograph and it's one of my favourite images. So I hope you enjoyed those, those uh, images that were led by lighting, so it was all about the lighting. We may not have got great emotion and per probably not the best of locations, but hey, it was the lighting that saved the day. The next is going to be location. Now for me this is something that a lot of photographers do forget about because don't forget our clients book us uh, for the venues, for the locations, uh, so we need to grab them into our images as well. So the next set of images that I'm going to run through, it's all about the location and what we were trying to achieve from them images. So let's have a look at some images that are led by location. 
So our first image in this section is one that a lot of us wedding photographers will recognise and that's the photograph from the back of the church. Now don't forget the bride and groom have chosen this church for a reason. It's it's more than likely been a family, uh, a place that the, over generations that they've come to. They might have been uh, baptised there. It might have been where their parents got married. So we really need to show the grandeur of this church uh, and, and I suppose by using the wide angle lens that's what we've done here. We've made the church look quite big. The leaning angles are pointing towards the bride and groom and again leading the eye to where we want the eye to go to, which is the bride and groom. So another image very similar to the last one, uh, a wedding ceremony, but this is slightly different. Instead of showing the grandeur of the inside here, I wanted to show the grandeur of the outside. I wanted to show the location of where the wedding ceremony was taking place. Again, the bride and groom had decided to get married on the side of a mountain uh, in the middle of a French ski resort, and we need to show that within our images. Okay. The story is literally the bride and groom getting married, but really the bride and groom wants us to show just how small and insignificant they're looking within this whole image. It's also nice to subtly get the wedding venue or the environment into the image. This really is a photograph of the car, the bride and groom arriving toasting the guests as they drive up. But by literally including the, the house, the wedding venue as well, it just adds that little extra storytelling element to the image. Also, the leading lines of the road are taking us straight up to where the bride and groom are going. In this next image, there is nothing subtle about the location. It is all about the location. The bride and groom specifically wanted a photograph overlooking uh, Florence City from uh, Palazzo Michelangelo. What we wanted to do was to get the bride and groom as part of that shot as well. Yes, it was their wedding day, but we wanted to get that connection, that memory as well. So we'd got the flash guns ready. We had the, the, the lens, the camera, everything was ready to go because it was absolutely packed with tourists. So a quick way of pushing our way through to the front of it, Quick couple of shots and within two or three minutes we've been overrun by tourists again. Uh, literally from arriving at the location to leaving the location must have been at most seven, eight minutes. Uh, it was that quick. So preparation for this one, but it's one of my favourite location photographs. So that's the location images. The next is possibly my favourite. It's all about the emotion. So again, these images, we're not thinking about lighting. We're not thinking about the location. It's purely that moment. It's purely capturing that emotion. So I'm going to run through some images, tell you some of the stories behind them, uh, and I hope you like these images. So this photograph here was taken in the bridal suite. Um, as the bride had just finished getting ready, uh, there was a knock at the door um, and the groom opened the door and they stood back to back and held hands and they just had a few words, said a few poems to each other and I think the emotion just got a little bit too much for the groom there as he, as he just brought down into tears. Um, there is a little bit of a backstory behind this, a few personal things that had gone on in the bride and groom's life. Uh, but this was just a stunning moment, a gorgeous moment that we managed to capture. The light here is just the light that's coming through from the window so it's all available light and literally was taken as it happened. Sometimes with emotions, they're not happy emotions. This is this is a sad moment and um, the bride and groom have gone to the bride's mother's grave and she's put a bouquet uh, on her grave and, and she's just broken down with emotion. Um, as photographers, it's important for us to capture these moments, but I didn't want to I didn't want to zoom in and, and get a close face shot of this. I, I, I just wanted to leave a little bit of, of privacy with the bride and groom and certainly with the bride in, in her moment of grief. But I wanted to use the gravestones also to lead into this image. Um, we just were very lucky that the, the light was just hitting the bride and groom just perfectly. And it's one of my favourite uh, candid moments at a, at a wedding day. With this particular image, sometimes it's fun. It's fun emotion that you get. Um, I like to call this photograph, look at my lens, and, and it's one of those great Uncle Bobs that we do get at, uh, at wedding days. Uh, this was a, a, a winterish wedding, so there's not a lot of uh, foliage around. Uh, the light was very, very flat. And we've just got two guys here uh, chatting. The guy on the left obviously has got his brand new camera with his big long zoom lens, and the guy on the right is, is really struggling with, uh, with camera envy here, because obviously, sizes everything when it comes to photography um, again this is just one of those images that tells such a story about wedding guests and it also tells a story about photography as well so that's the emotion side of things probably my favorite i hope it's yours as well um, so we've covered the light inside 
we've covered location and we've just covered emotion. Now, hey, it's a perfect world. We've managed to get all three together. So what I thought I'd do to finish this video is I would run through some of my favorite images that, that really encapsulate the location, the lighting and the emotion, the three elements that I'm looking for in my images. So I'm gonna run through some of them images now and I'm gonna tell you the story behind them and also some of the technical detail as well. So let's get into them now. And this image is a great example of when you just get lucky. Um, this is a winter wedding. Now, I know some of you guys around the world will say, well, listen, in winter we get seven foot of snow. But trust me, this is this is a winter wedding in the UK. Um, and we just arrived at the wedding venue and the sun had started to set and we got that beautiful golden hour. Uh, and the mist had just started to flow in across the uh, across the farmer's field. So we, so we literally ran down uh, to this location um, and it was all about the composition. It was all about the framing and that connection between the bride and groom. The lighting was perfect, the location was perfect. We just had to make sure that we got that emotion as well to get all three together. So this is shot with a telephoto lens, but I just love about it is the, the leading lines. We've got the road that's leading. We've almost got an X coming into it. One thing to think about here is your composition. Just imagine if the couple were a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, it just wouldn't have worked. Just imagine if we hadn't have had that connection. Uh, it, again, it just wouldn't have worked. So just by spending that little bit more time, uh, making making sure that everything is perfect will give you the rewards. So this image taken in a beautiful drawing room at one of my favourite wedding venues uh, was all about trying to get that beautiful warm ambient light that's within this room. Um, so when I actually got the bride and groom into the room I found that the light was just a little bit too orange, it was too warm and there was giving colour casts onto the dress uh, and onto the skin tones. So what we had to do is get some clean light onto, onto the bride and groom and to do this we had a speed light camera left which had a grid and a diffuser fitted on it. The grid was to direct the light so we didn't have a light spill, the diffuser was to soften that light and behind the bride and groom we had a, another speed light uh, with just a diffuser on and the idea of the speed light at the back was to cause a separation so the rim light actually separates the bride and groom from the background. The, the two flashlights really is just to put clean light onto, onto the bride and groom. And by slightly underexposing for the, for the ambient, it's really brought out that warm glow of the lights. But the speed lights have kept the bride and groom nice and clean and nice and bright, which makes, means that they are the, the main visual point within this image, which is exactly what I wanted them to be. So what better an image to finish on than my favourite time of any wedding day, which is is the sunset or golden hour. Um, this is a beautiful photograph of the bride and groom um, with artificial lights. So we're using two speed lights here. And the, the reason for the speed lights is really just to bring that uh, bring that ambient light down to, to really make that golden glow of that, uh, of that sunset just really stand out. So to camera left, we have a speed light with a diffuser on. And to camera right, uh, on a stand, we have... Have a, uh, we have a speed light with a grid and uh, an orange CTO gel on. One thing I'm trying to do with, uh, with artificial light is to try and make it look natural. So camera left, the speed light with the diffuser on is to light the subject and really make the, the bride and groom pop from the background. But the, the, the speed light on the right with the grid and the CTO gel is to, to, to really give a, a natural golden glow to the bride and groom. So that orange glow that you see going down the back of the bride's dress, that is actually the CTO gel. That's actually artificial light, but it may, it's meant to look as though it's look coming from the, from the sunset. The, the speed light to the right was, was removed in post-production. The tree on the right just helps bring the bride and groom a little bit more detail, a little bit more interest into the image. And the connection between the bride and groom is just priceless. So I hope you enjoyed looking through those images, some of my favourite images that I feel are packed full of the three elements that I'm looking for. The lighting, the location, and of course the emotion. Again, let me know your comments in the comment section below. Uh, and let's have a discussion about this. See what your favourite images were. Thank you for watching this video guys. I hope you found it really useful. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification button because uh, we've got future videos coming out all the time. So thank you very much for watching. Keep shooting, keep yourselves creative, keep safe most of all uh, and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.